Welcome back. I'm kind of cut off, but it's all right. How's it going, everybody? Your host, AJ, aka Hi Guy. Mia san, o kai na sai. Tokyo Sandbox. Mo soro soro wari ni chikai. Kyo wa ne, ashita maru yo. Anyways, today we have our amazing guests, the Implausible Industries, Daniel and Chris. <laughs> Hello. There was people. <laughs> and I couldn't really ignore the fact that you all have lab coats and you have a, even a goggle. Like, are, are you operating a game that, that's dangerous or. Safety first, AJ. Well, I, that's true. That's true. You're talking to a man who doesn't even have a helmet when there's no hair, no, no cushion, but. Anywho,、I'm、so、sorry. I'm assuming you guys are not scientists, but you're gamers or game developers, right?、So、game scientists. Game scientists. So you have a game, right? And we, we would like to watch, or I want to talk about your games. Okay.、Much. So、uh, the game that we're showing here today is called Research and Destroy.、Uh, basically, you take control of、uh, a squad of scientists that's. Trying to retake the world、uh, back from the brink of destruction from the supernatural menace.、Um, uh, the video that you're seeing at the moment is our、uh, playthrough. It's not exactly the most recent stuff that we have, but it's pretty close. So,、um, yeah, the reason why we're wearing coats here today is just. Well, you know, you're researchers, right? Yeah, you gotta research everything. We're, re we're researching、uh, the reaction of players to our latest prototype. Lo and behold, here comes some. They're pretty comfortable too. They look good and they're antibacterial. Yeah, actually, surprisingly, lab coats are really comfortable. I was actually surprised when I first wore a lab coat. I'm like, I could pretty much stay in these lab coats for a long time. This feels good. Yeah, it's it's really nice. So I'm actually looking at the gameplay. It looks like it's a turn-based strategy game. It is, yeah. I mean, we have to like quickly elevator pitch it. It's maybe like a little bit of Valkyria Chronicles, XCOM, and someone just pointed this out to us today. But a little bit of Worms in there, maybe. Ah,、uh, I, I guess I guess it does have that little aspect. Yeah, because I do love Valkyria Chronicles. So when I saw like the first gameplay, it kind of reminded me of that for sure.、Um, the thing is, I see Supernatural's turn. What does that mean? What does supernatural okay, so turn mean? The supernaturals—that's、uh, a faction of enemies that our hero scientists have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. As game developers, we go into the office, we sit in our chair, and we make games. For super scientists, they get out of the office, they strap on their quantum modifiers, and they—they they blast the f out of everything supernatural, basically. So pretty much. We can talk about. We we think those are like the bugs, pretty much, right? Pretty like, much. Every time much. you go to sit down, let's go ahead and program something. Bugs comes up, and you're like, That's right. Ah, I gotta deal with this. Pretty much, their way of dealing with bugs is pretty much blast them and misery. Blast them first, and、awesome. then squash them later. All right, all right. So this game, how long have you been working on this game? Like, it looks beautiful already. Like, I love the cell shading with that little cartoon effect in it. Well, thank you.、Uh, on and off, I guess we've been working on、uh, research and destroy for about three years, but it's not our primary day-to-day -day operation. We do work for hire here in Tokyo. Oh.、Um, we're Unreal Four specialists, so、um, we help other studios、uh, make their games. And、uh, from time to time, we work on our pet project, which is research、oh. and destroy. So you both live in Tokyo. Yes, there's four of us in in at、oh, Impossible. Oh, but all right. So well, yeah. As an indie studio, you can't like always work on your own game. If you have another job on the side, go ahead and work on. So it, it's understandable that it takes quite a while. But this game, it seems like it's pretty much done. Seeing the gameplay right well, now. Well, you're looking at A level. Ah, so basically, we went through a lot of prototypes.、Um, we're still kind of calling this a prototype, although you know the idea of prototypes is usually something you're willing to throw away, and we've thrown away a lot of prototypes. But basically, we've reached the point where we're not throwing any more away. We can actually start building、mm. a full-fledged game out of this, but it just needs time, dedicated, and content. We need to build maps, levels, characters, more enemies. More different kinds of rocks. Yeah, it's kind of important to note that、um, at the moment we're entirely self-funded.、Mm. Um, now, if we continue doing that, then it's going to take a long time. 
to finish our game. Um, so we are looking for external funding. So if anyone has liked what they've seen today, then uh, please hit us up. Would you like to like start a Kickstarter or anything like that? We're open to a, a number of different avenues to take. Uh, we're mm. still, we'd still prefer to go a more traditional kind of uh, publisher, publisher route. Got than, it, got uh, it. But you know, it's an option on the table. That's, tr it's actually really nice. Uh, it seems like you are actually taking a lot of effort on the graphics and the stat uh, status. So right now it's still going on an ongoing project, so you really don't really have an ETA on when this game would... Uh, if we had the finish. money to finish... Uh, well, if we had the money that we need to finish it uh, today, we would probably spend another 8 or 10 months on it, I think. 8 or 10 months. But, oh, okay, so if you did get the funding... Pretty much you can go full force on it. Yes, indeed. That's our dream. The dream. Please, someone make our dream come happen. <laughs> Everybody, investors, please. If you want to publish this amazing game that you see right now, it looks amazing right now. So what platform are you thinking about? Like what? if, for instance, let's think of a scenario where this game is fully funded and said, okay, let's do this. What platforms are you going to go ahead and release it on? Well, we basically have experience on all major platforms, I think. We haven't touched Switch yet. Mm. But, I mean, we're working UE4. Um, it's pretty well designed in terms of platform support. So, in the end, it comes down to whoever our precious sugar daddy or mommy is. If you want us to put it on a specific platform, that's cool. At the moment, we're mainly working on PC. Mm. Personally, if we had the money, I'd love to put it on everything. Um, so this is actually multiplayer. Yeah, yeah. It's real time split screen. Yep. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know what? I am pretty dumb right there. <laughs> like I was thinking, like it is split screen, and I'm like, uh, do you think uh, online multiplayer? Yes. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Four players, either online or local split screen. That's a. So when the online multiplayer happens, it's still gonna be like turn based. So they're like, okay, one player goes, and then. No, 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 no. No. That's the real important thing. That's how, kind of how we stumbled upon the idea of direct control of the players, Valkyria style. Because the main thing, we wanted to make a, a tactical bay game, right? I think we were yeah. all obsessing over XCOM at that point. And we thought XCOM of... XCOM 2. Yeah, XCOM 2. No, at that time, it was like the, whatever, the enemy within, XCOM I think. XCOM 2. But uh, we thought, that, you know, so one player takes their turn, then the other player takes their turn, the other player takes their turn, and then, you know, people are going to drop, they'll get bored. So then we tried doing simultaneous stuff, and then like the traditional movement system wasn't working. You know, enemies like your characters bump into each other. Uh huh. But then when you take direct control, then you could just walk around each other, and if you happen to run into each other's shots or drop a grenade on a friend, then you never know what happens. Accidents, happen. bad things. So that's happen. why you want to communicate, saying like, "I'm going yes. over there. All right, okay, don't don't shoot anything." No, so it becomes really interesting because we have uh, like weapons that'll throw shields over to things. So you could just say, listen, I'm going to run in here. I'm going to charge against these mommies. I'm going to hit them with the plasma thrower a little bit. I'm going to be vulnerable. Throw a shield over me right now. Good. Thanks. And the important thing, though, is that since it's all simultaneous, all the player turns are done quick. Mm -hmm. And the other important thing we did is all the enemies move simultaneously. You're not going to wait for one enemy to go, then the, other, then the other, then the mm -hmm. other, then the other. So you have a lot of enemies. The only concession we made is all enemies attacking a single player, they'll take turns. So you'll see everyone attacking one player, okay. then everyone attacking another player, just so you know what's going on. So through. attacking would be a turn base, but then moving it will be like, yeah. like they'll all simultaneously move. Yeah, because I was thinking like it would be interesting where like there will be like swarm of enemies just attack one player, like boom, explodes and dies or That's something. That's basically like what that. happens. That is what happens. <laughs> you pay attention. But a whole bunch of ghosts attack one player and all and they're like, oh. boom, boom, boom. And sadness occurs. It's like, oh my goodness. Why couldn't you protect me? Yeah. So, right now, I guess it's uh, P2E kind of. Then the multiplayer yeah. will be like, it's going to be attacking a swarm of enemies. Are you thinking of like, for instance, player versus player? We've had a lot of people come up to us and say, you know, is there a PvP? Um, it's something we could do, but I think that really, like, the genesis of this project is is wanting to play cooperatively with people. Uh. So it's it's a pillar of the game. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's a cooperative team battle would be yeah. actually interesting. Yeah, like team versus team. Exactly. Maybe. 
Yeah, but that said, friendly fire is always on, so if you well, want to treat yeah, it as a exactly. PvP game, you can, but the missions will be done pretty fast. So the players can yeah. kind of make it into a PvP, kind of, with their imagination. They're like, okay, let's make it into a PvP game. Their imaginations and high explosives. No. Just throw bombs at each other. That would work. Or, like, push them away so there's, like, enemies swarm towards them, like, kind of guide the enemy towards the... Yeah, you could, you could do that, actually. Yeah. We, I would like to actually see a little bit more non-destructive griefing in the game, if you know what I mean. Like, True. Not, not something that's going to degrade someone's enjoyment too much, but mm. still kind of fun for whoever's doing it. Yeah, I could, I could definitely see Socially that. Socially acceptable griefing. Socially acceptable <laughs> griefing. You're like, no. Sag. <laughs> I'm coining it. Yeah. So for this game... Where can people go and search about this game? Like, I know, obviously, if they're at Tokyo Sandbox, they can go to your booth. But for the people who's not here... Uh, okay, so Facebook. Uh, we have our Facebook page, uh, Implausible Industries. Uh, we have Implausible Indie on YouTube. Mm. Uh, we have a Twitter account, Implausible Indie, as well. Um, if you do a search for Research and Destroy on Google, don't know if we can name brands or whatever, but mm. if you do that, then uh, Research and Destroy should be the first awesome. game to come up. I think so. we're on there somewhere. Especially if you, throw ga if you throw game in there, we'll probably be on there. Yeah. Are you planning to make this game uh, international? Like, right now, I guess it's in English. It's, it's in, in English and Japanese, except for two words that I noticed we forgot to localize. Oh, so it is in English and Japanese. Yep. That's actually interesting. That's amazing. Some people complain that some of the Japanese is weird, but we pointed out to them that they're weird translations of weird English words. It's like, so. the English is weird all anyways. Yeah, so. we have a lot of made-up science words, <laughs> and we apologize in advance to any scientists actually playing this game. We all love science, but we're not really intending to be accurate. Ac or scientific it's accurate. This well, is a game. Well, this it's a game, damn Super it. science. Actually, it's, it's one thing. I'm just going to reach out to all the scientists out there. If anyone wants to come and do some, do some technical consulting for no money until we have some money, <laughs> then please come and, uh, come and talk to us because we, we actually big fans of science. It's, um, it's one of the reasons why the yeah. theme You guys of can game, see the lab coats. Yeah. We love what you wear mostly. But apart from that, we love what you do. Keep it up. Keep on sciencing. Yeah. Keep on sciencing. We yeah. love the science. Sure. But thank you very much for coming over here and showing this game. Hopefully, you guys can get that investor cash or publisher money. so cash I can money. <laughs> cash money. Maybe hopefully